which is the July 11th, 2019 meeting of the Northampton City Council. To welcome everybody, I'm Ryan O'Donnell, I'm the council president, so I'll be running the meeting. Uh, these proceedings are being audio and video recorded, broadcast on NCTV to all your friends and neighbors. And we will begin, as we always do, with public comment. This is a chance for anyone to speak about anything. There's only a couple rules that I ask in order to guarantee that everyone has equal time and everyone can be heard fairly. And the first rule is please keep your comments to three minutes or less. And second, please remember that it's your time. Uh, because of the open meeting law, we can't have a back and forth with you on subjects. So give your opinion to us and to the public and please feel encouraged to follow up with your counselors or city officials after, but we don't have debates. It's your time to be heard, okay? So I will start with the sign-up sheet. If you haven't signed up, don't worry. I'll ask, anyone can talk afterwards. You'll forgive any mispronunciations. Um, and the first is Andrea Egito. Welcome, the floor is yours. Good evening. My name is Andrea Egito. I live in Florence, and I am the teacher chapter coordinator for the Northampton Association of School Employees. We're still here. We've been told by the school committee in our mediation sessions that the mayor said he would not allocate any more money to the school budget, even though he had promised that multiple times in his public budget meetings to meet our request for a fair contract for all school employees, the school budget needs to be increased by about $250,000 each year. In the first two quarterly payments, the city has already received over $1.3 million in revenue from cannabis sales. That money alone could cover our request for the three years of our next contract. But instead, the mayor was quoted in the newspaper as saying he'll be adding it to capital improvements. Really? Really? Capital improvements? More capital improvements. When our, wage, when our employees aren't making a living wage. The very $15 minimum wage that the mayor signed a petition for the city doesn't have to pay its employees. So we have cafeteria workers starting making $11.64 an hour in Northampton. Do you value the educators in this city? That's my question. The people that feed, clean up after, care for, love, and teach our children. Do you value their work? Or are you expecting that a predominantly female workforce will quiet down, be nice, and be politely grateful for given what they are given? We're not going to do it anymore. Do you value the educators in this city? If you do, prove it. To whatever you have to, to convince our mayor to allocate the money to the school budget, and then to direct the school committee to settle the contract now, before it's too late, before our schools fall apart. Because right now, the value of the Northampton Public Schools is the value of the city of Northampton. We're not gonna take it anymore. We're not gonna let things be built and added on our backs anymore. $950,000 garages, various things elsewhere. We're not gonna be quiet anymore. So please, do whatever you can. We have the money. It's in the budget and I have faith that all of you can help the mayor find it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mike Kirby, Mr. Kirby, yes. former counselor Kirby. Former counselor, ex-counselor, has been counselor. <laughs> oh, hi, I'm Mike Kirby. Um, 
I'm going out. It's the first time I've been up here for a long time, so I'm basically doing it just to give my mouth some exercise <laughs> to see if it see if it works or not, because it may have stopped working at some point. Uh, but if one thing gets gets my mouth going, it's it's being in a state of what they call high dudgeon. I don't know if anybody knows what high dudgeon is, but it's extremely upset. And, uh, and um, the minor thing that kind of set me off today was, uh, was all these stakes along Prospect Street. From, from, the, um, from the hospital, all the way to pros all the way down Prospect Street. Every 22 feet, there's a stake that says a tree is going to go in. Uh, now trees are <coughs> are beautiful, but but they cost money, and the Department of Public Works its its budget is going going up in 22. In 20, year, year 20. Um, in fact, it's going up 15%. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's much more going up than the school budget, which I think is about 4%. Mm -hmm. um, is that right? Yes, thank you. Um, and over the last month or so, I've been looking at all the trucks, the brand new trucks that, and equipment that the DPW does. And it seems like we're spending a lot of money on equipment that other communities rent from, um, on a need basis. In other words, if you need a grader, get it for a couple of days. We've got a grader sitting in the, in the garage all year. In fact, there may be two graders. I'm not sure, but essentially, what? <clears throat> and the other day we bought a tree stump grinder, not just an ordinary tree stump grinder, but this is a Carlton, top of the line. It's got a diamond diamond uh, shaped <coughs> cutting wheel. It's it's. It costs close to a hundred thousand dollars, and we other have another stump grinder that works perfectly fine. So my sense is, we see far too much equipment on the street. Thank you very much for listening to me. Okay. Thank you, Mr. And, and I want to say one final thing before I'm kicked in unsurry mode. You, could you do it in in a short sentence? Yeah. Please. That. We need to spend the money for these teachers here, you know. There's a ton of money there somewhere in that, in that big budget. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're all set with that. It's going to pick you up. Thank you. Jennifer Derringer, 60 North Street, Northampton, and I am here tonight to speak in support of the resolution regarding the right to counsel in eviction cases. I'm a managing attorney at Community Legal Aid. We provide free legal services uh, in civil <laughs> cases for low-income folks in um, all of the four western counties as well as Worcester. And CLA, like most legal aid programs, specializes in representing tenants in eviction cases, the very kind of cases that this resolution uh, references. And, um, and that is why other successful right to counsel programs around the country have utilized legal aid attorneys to, to implement their laws. While many people believe there's already a right to counsel in civil legal cases, particularly those as important as eviction defense cases, there is not. Um, over 90% of Massachusetts tenants across the state are unrepresented. They have to go to court and represent themselves in eviction cases. Um, legal Aid, in part through the city's uh, funds through CDBG, gets funding to provide these services. Um, but we still, even with that funding and the state funding and federal funding, we turn away about 50% of those that are eligible financially for our services. There's not enough resources to help them. 
Um, the need for experienced counsel when facing eviction is especially pronounced for vulnerable low-income folks, the ones that we help, folks that are likely to become homeless if they are not able to, um, if they're unsuccessful in, in housing court. Uh, legal aid attorneys who specialize in eviction cases advocate, navigate complicated rules and regulations, particularly around subsidized tenancies, raise affirmative claims, and problem solve issues with the tenancy. This often prevents families from losing their homes and becoming homeless. It also benefits landlords in a variety of different ways. We can access money for rent arrears. We can get tenants back on subsidy programs, which brings money back to the landlord. We can access services for tenants with disabilities. That all benefits the landlords. We act as problem solvers often, and we are often able to solve the problem and get the tenancy back on track. Uh, the best way to illustrate the importance of counsel in this case is, is to briefly tell you about either one or two stories, depending on how quickly I speak. Um, the first one is Jane, a single woman living in Northampton in subsidized housing. Uh, Jane was a survivor of severe sexual assault and battery, a trauma that led to multiple psychiatric hospitalizations. After one of the discharges, she had a crisis that led to a conflict with management. That in turn led to management starting an evic the eviction process. Uh, we were able to work with the landlord to explain how the law protects Jane. In these circumstances, we were able to get her services, increased services that she needed to stabilize her, and uh, the landlord agreed to allow her to stay in her apartment once she got those stabilizing supports. Uh, another story is uh, an elder, an, uh, an elder folks who had lived in Northampton for 30 years lost their subsidy. We were able to get their subsidy back as well as get the money paid back that they owed and they were able to stay in their house of over 30 years. So those are the kind of stories that we are looking at here. So I urge you to support the resolution uh, for a right to counsel in eviction cases. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Derringer. So we have oh, another former counselor, Pamela Schwartz. Hey, Welcome. Everybody. Um, I'm Pamela Schwartz. I live at 22 Columbus Avenue, Northampton. Um, and I'm here tonight in my capacity as director of the Western Massachusetts Network to End Homelessness to speak in support of the resolution filed by Councillor Ciara and Councillor Dwight um, around uh, right to counsel and eviction sealing. First of all, thank you, counselors. Really appreciate your leadership on this. Um, and I'm going to take a couple minutes to talk about the Homes Bill or the Eviction Ceiling Bill. Coming from the network, the network is a broad based coalition of nonprofit providers, state agency folks, uh, p entities from across every single sector that you can imagine that works to stabilize people in their homes, from housing providers to childcare to community colleges to workforce development, et cetera. And, st and we work together around tables all the time. There may be 300 people in total that are coming together. One of the single most recurring issues that comes up around our tables is what can we do about the eviction record on a tenant that bans them effectively for life from getting another apartment. Because right now, there, it is effectively like an eviction for life. When an eviction case is filed, you, it is there as public record. And whether or not it's dismissed, whether or not you, what, get counter, you file counterclaims and you win, all that landlord sees when they conduct a search is an eviction and they deny the application before going another step further. The consequences are so severe, are truly potentially lifelong, and they are a direct contributor to homelessness. And I, I can't tell you how many stories I'm carrying around indirectly from the people who are serving people who are saying, we have to do something about this. We cannot get the people we are trying to rehouse into an apartment because an eviction was filed. And this bill, will make a, a, a massive difference in the lives of hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people. Since 1998, one million eviction cases have been filed in this state. One million eviction cases, those are permanent records. It is like a scarlet E across these people's forehead. And this, this bill will allow the, an instant sealing when an eviction is filed, and that it only becomes unsealed after the disposition of the case if it is against the tenant. So it is, it is a protection for the housing efforts, and it is also, let me add, a protection around the injustices based 
on the color of people's skin and their ethnicity. Right now, in Massachusetts, 74% of tenants are Latinx, 66% are, are African American, and 32% are white. So you can see how this plays out. And I just want to add that the timing of this resolution, extra, extra thanks for getting it on the docket right now. There is a hearing on Tuesday, July 16th, next week, our great legislators, Senator Comerford and Representative Sabadosa, are co-sponsoring both of these bills. They're ready to testify on, in favor of it. They want to bring our community. They are prepared to bring Northampton in support of this and say, we believe in this. We need this. We know what we need to do to contribute to the end of homelessness in Northampton, Western Massachusetts, and the state of Massachusetts. Hey, thank, you thank you very much. Thank you. Continuing with the same household. Yes, Joe Feldman, Joe Feldman uh, 22 Columbus Ave. Um, I'm a former legal aid lawyer. I have a small civil rights and tenant practice in Springfield, and I represent only tenants uh, in Springfield and also in Northampton. I wanted to just talk about the numbers one more second here. Last year, there were 40,000 evictions filed in Massachusetts, 30,000 in housing court, and in the Western Mass housing court that covers uh, Northampton, 5,738. Of those, 70% of landlords had a lawyer, 7% of tenants had a lawyer. And this is a system that's designed for two lawyers. And I just want to quote a decision from the uh, Supreme Judicial Court that came down a, a couple of months ago. The complexity and speed of summary process, which are eviction cases, and disparities in legal representation between landlords and tenants. Specifically, we note that summary process cases are complex, fast moving, and generally litigated by landlords who are represented by attorneys and tenants who are not. So that's from the state Supreme Court talking about its own eviction process. Um, part of the fun job that I have is sitting in housing court on Thursdays often um, and waiting for hours to be heard by a judge. Um, I was in court Tuesday, actually, and I counted who was in the court, just looking at the lawyers. There were 13 lawyers. I was the only tenant lawyer in the court. Today, there are, um, in Springfield, there are ordinarily between 100 and 200 cases on for eviction on a Thursday. Thursday is the eviction day by rule in Massachusetts. There's a page listing of all the cases that's posted. The last page had 32 cases on it. Every landlord was represented. Every tenant was listed as pro se, which is Latin for re representing yourself. There were no tenant lawyers on the last page of the docket. So that's the situation we have. Um, I just also want to discuss, as Jen did, wanted to talk about my own practice and what's happened when there is a lawyer. I'm sometimes the lawyer for a day, which is a volunteer in the court to make sure that some people at least get some representation if you're a tenant. Um, I had a case where a homeowner was about to be evicted, had asked for more time from the bank who had foreclosed on her. Um, the lawyer had said no, and she was about to get evicted that day. I was able to come in. There was an argument that the bank hadn't foreclosed properly, and she lives for another day. Without her, without a lawyer, there was no question she was going to be evicted that day. Same thing, I had a tenant who was living in a house that had been sold. She has a wheelchair. She couldn't use her kitchen because the flooring was so bad. The management company who brought the eviction had no right to evict her under Massachusetts law, but she was ready to move out. And I was a lawyer for a day, came in, case got dismissed. So the difference between a lawyer and not a lawyer is enormous. It doesn't have to be this way. We can even the scales. We can put our city on record saying that we want actual justice. A system designed for lawyers should have lawyers and not depend on the ignorance of a party to get an unjust result. Please pass the resolution. Thank you. <laughs> Andrea Bazian, the floor is yours. Good evening. My name is Andrea Avazian, and I live in Northampton. I come to you as a registered nurse with a master's degree in maternal child health and as an ordained minister in the United Church of Christ. I am also a longtime community activist. I am here to speak in support of your resolution to encourage the state legislature to remove the religious exemption to vaccinations. As a nurse, I am here to say again what I believe you already know, that measles can be very dangerous, possibly fatal, and that the measles vaccine is both effective and safe. As a member of the clergy, 
I believe that the expression of religious beliefs is a cherished right and civil liberty, but that right does not extend to the point where school populations are put at risk for failure to vaccinate one's child. As a community activist, I am concerned that here, in our community, there are pockets of low immunization rates that pose risks for the entire community and that public action is necessary to assure public safety. Please tell the legislature that Massachusetts should join the growing list of states that have disallowed the religious exemption for vaccines, keeping in place only the medical exemption. Thank you. Thank you. All right, do I have uh, Marissa Marks? Hello. I'm Marissa Marks at 150 Prospect Avenue in Northampton. I'm here to talk about fair wages for our teachers. Uh, my family came to this country when I was nine years old from the former Soviet, Soviet Union. Our first step was to find housing, and the second step was to move to a town with excellent public schools. I ended up graduating from a high school where 98% of the students went to university and had a wide variety of AP classes. My husband and I moved to Northampton in 2007, had our first child within a few months after that. And when we were house hunting, we looked at staying in Northampton or moving to some of the surrounding towns that maybe were cheaper. And we decided to stay in Northampton because we wanted the schools that Northampton had to offer. We now have three kids in Northampton Public Schools. They've had fantastic teachers at Jackson Street School. And I want those teachers to stay and I want the teachers who are recruited to the Northampton Public Schools to be high quality teachers as the ones that my kids have had so far. And I don't want the quality teachers to leave because they're not getting a fair contract. Please keep that in mind in setting your budgets. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, um, is there anyone who has not signed up but would like to talk? Anybody? Yes, please, come on up. Hi. My name is Julie Hammond. I live right down the road at Five Clark Avenue. I teach physics at South Hadley High School, but I've been a resident here for three years. I wanted to stay in Northampton. Um, my significant other and I, uh, Guy Rosen, we started talking about where we want to buy a house. We've been renting for the last three years. and. We both want to stay in Northampton. We love it here. But when I started hearing about the way teachers were being treated, that Northampton isn't prioritizing public education when I benefited from a public education. I am who I am today because my teachers taught me how to read and write, how to do math, how to do physics. I wouldn't be standing here today if I hadn't had those teachers. And being someone who was thinking about getting a house and starting a family, as a future, hopeful future mother, I can't send future children to a school district who doesn't value teachers. So I hope to come back, but only if a budget is passed that actually values educators in our community. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else uh, like to give public comment? Anybody on any subject? No? All right, and hearing none, we will convene the council and start our work. And so I'll ask uh, for a roll call the council. Councilor Goodwell. Here. Councilor Clark. Here. Present. Councilor White. Here. Councilor Klein. Here. Councilor Clark. Present. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Nash. Here. Councilor Donald. Here. Here. All right, so we are here. Um, first is a public hearing on 19.1. 06, which is an application to amend the license for fuel storage, FP002A at the Department of Public Works Headquarters 125 Locust Street. In accordance with Natural Law Chapter 148, the City of Northampton Department of Public Works has submitted an amended application for license for a license for above ground storage of uh, diesel gasoline. It's 12,500 gallons. Um, oh, no, diesel, 12,500 gallons. Gasoline, 12,500 gallons, and waste oil, 5,000 gallons, at the City of Northampton Public Works garage, located at 125 uh, Locust Street. So now is our public hearing. Um, 
This is going to be on the consent agenda later, but for the start, I'd like to a motion to open the public. So moved. Okay. Second. And seconded by Council LaBarge. Um, any discussion on that? All those in favor of opening the hearing, please say aye. 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 Opposed any abstention. So, Mr. Mayor, would you like to introduce this? Sure would, yes. So this is the um, this is part of the DPW fuel depot uh, replacement project that has been on the capital uh, program for the past several years. Um, the uh, city council issued a license for the existing fuel depot as it's required to do. Some of you may recall um, a year or so ago, you had to issue a license for the new Cumberland Farms. Um, tank licenses is the purview of uh, the city council. Um, so what we're asking to do is to amend the existing license for the new uh, storage tank. And I think, Laura, if you want to photograph. So what's basically happening is we have two underground storage tanks now um, at the current uh, DPW fuel farm. Um, and the project is basically going to take, uh, the, basically we have two underground uh, 10,000 uh, diesel, 10,000 of uh, normal gasoline as well as a um, as well as a uh, waste uh, storage uh, tank as well and so what this will be converting to is this above ground uh, storage tank um, which will um, have a capacity uh, 12,500 gallons each of diesel and gasoline fuel um, there'll be a canopy erected over the fuel dispensing area there'll be a concrete foundations um, you see there's bollards there's also a pretty complicated uh, leak detection system as well as a fire suppression system um, this is you saw on the license the fire department um, had to review the plans for it um, as well as the state fire marshal uh, they have both approved the plans for it and support um, issuance of the license basically the process from here is with, once we have the license amended we can then apply for the state permits um, which we hope to secure later this month um, and then the tank and canopy fabrication will begin that'll take about 12 weeks um, the demolition and site work we hope will happen between September and December um, and then we hope the project will be completed uh, by um, January 2020 um, again this is a uh, capital improvement project um, and this would Require you to vote to grant an amendment to the current license, just to, for the, basically the change in the um, in in the style of tank. Thank you very much. Other members of the public who'd like to speak in this public hearing on this matter, for, against, neutral, or anything. No. Um, hearing none, I'll ask the other members of the council. Council Barge. Yes, Mayor. What is going to be the cost? So this is a capital improvement project that has uh, was already approved and funded, and the cost of this new uh, fuels uh, farm is six hundred and thirty-three thousand um, dollars. One of the concerns we have, or you know, one of the reasons that's precipitating it, is the age of the underground storage tanks, um, which have to be replaced, as um, often happens. Um, this is a far uh, less expensive way to go, the above ground versus the underground. Um, it also uh, eliminates the risk of potential you know, underground contamination. Um, and these, ta these above ground tanks are tested for you know, fire, they're tested holistically, um, and uh, they're, they have um, multi-wall tanks with detection systems between <coughs> the walls, so at the first sign of a leak, um, uh, they can be uh, uh, they can be shut down and addressed. So that's what this project is about. Haven't, hasn't the state been looking at this of removing underground tanks and bringing them above the Yeah, I don't know what... Uh, for the past four or five years now, they've been Yeah, they certainly, um, I know that uh, it's something that the fire chief um, uh, was very supportive of, um, as well as, and again, I think, you know, from DEP's perspective, the less underground things, the better, just because they're, that when they leak, that's when there's environmental problems. And we have lots of, you know, 21 e sites around the state from, um, from you know, tanks that have, uh, that have leaked and then leach into the soils and cause problems. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I don't, I'm not really sure what the policy is, but for our, from our perspective, uh, this is the um, this is the best way for them moving forward. And this is a 
a system that that fuels not only DBW, it it fuels police vehicles, fire vehicles. Um, it basically provides fuel school vehicles. It provides fuel for all of the city uh, vehicles. I think there might be some confusing things going on here about capital improvements and how the city uses that money. That's it's not used for. For pay raises, or well, we certainly that's uh, not going to be. Let's be careful of straying off the off yeah. the subject on this. But you can answer if you feel it's germane. But uh, all I can say is that you know we present the charter requires these two separate things to happen: the capital improvement program and the budget, um, and we allocate a certain percentage. Um, uh, and basically the funding like for example the funding um, some of the funding to construct this project will use enterprise funds uh, sewer and water um, because those vehicles also um, utilize it as well as uh, general fund there's some borrowed money that we borrow for capital funds um, as well as funds from our stabilization account so um, it's definitely a, a separate part of our um, of the way that we fund our city and it's a relatively small percentage relative to the size of our operating budget in terms of that percentage. Thank you. So, Councillor Dwight and Councillor Bidwell. It just, it just by way of, uh, I think you may be confusing with above ground fuel storage that uh, for heating fuel, it's required that you, uh, that you know we no longer put heating oil underground. Uh, and so that's a little different than this is, this is, uh, like gas stations don't have above ground tanks that you wouldn't see them they would be underground but they the considerable more f uh, fail safes in, involved in that council uh yes the, the, does this project cost include the removal of the underground storage tanks that that has um that's part of the project yeah. as well yeah and we've been doing that uh prepping for that work and doing some work related to that site work related to that so yeah and um, is there any we obviously have to keep have a maintain a functioning farm right right yeah is there any indication of contaminated soil um, issues there is uh, not directly around the farm but there have been some test borings done in other areas uh, not related to that but we've been addressing that through the project so we don't believe there'll be any long-term contamination issues yeah and again the the, the idea is to um, to replace them before right. an issue arises, right. given their age. Yeah. Right. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, stick with the council for a second. Any other councilor, council manic questions? No? Um, we'll go back to the public. Oh. I'm sorry. Go, I was going to move to close the hearing. But it's one more time. Uh, Second it. Well, okay. Um, <laughs> any member of the public would like to speak on this, having, having heard the, this discussion? You're welcome to. Okay. Well, then hearing none, there's a motion to close the public hearing made by Councilor Dwight and seconded by Councilor Barnes. Um, any discussion on that? All those in favor of closing the hearing, please say aye. 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 Those any abstentions, the hearing is closed. That comes back on the consent agenda later. All right. Uh, any uh, announcements for me? Certainly any one-minute announcements for members of the Council. Councilor Dwight. Uh, again, on the Charter Review Committee and the discussion that actually I may refer to the co-chair who was present. So I may re rely on her, her support if I, if I space this out. Um, basically, at this stage, we are, we, we were, it was a continuation of discussion, one central discussion about how to increase uh, and expand access by underserved or marginalized communities that are not necessarily uh, aware, perhaps, or it, it, uh, about the discussions relative to the charter. Um, there was a lengthy discussion that I think will be continued, um, but at the same time, there is there some built-in frustration. And it's, not, and it's not just limited to just marginalized communities. I mean, by and large, uh, it was, uh, some of the frustration comes to the fact that Tuesday night, what do you want to do? Let's go sit the charter review committee meeting and see what they're talking about. It's not or or share what our frustrations are and I don't think people understand that or or necessarily know that the this is the equivalent of the city's constitution this is this is how we we decide how we are going to govern ourselves and that public input is 
gratefully received. And and but again, you know, I do understand. I I don't I don't think I would pick out an outfit on a Tuesday night to go to a meeting if I weren't part of the committee necessarily. But um, what else we talked? We talked about what was what was the beginning part of the meeting, Sam, that we discussed? What were the agenda items that? Oh, right, the vacancy of the mayor's office, which, uh, and subsequent to that, that we received uh, uh, an email from Mark Warner who points out that um, was some concern that in the subsection B in that item, which is 3-9, I think, but about the vacancy that says, uh, where it states that um, in the event of a vacancy that uh, the Council President will serve as mayor um, for uh, if if the term is if the remainder of the term is um, 21 months. Let's get up and speak. I think you're, I think you're, uh, <laughs> confusing that issue with what we talked about, which was about the um, mayor being out of the city. That was right. I'm so sorry. Of course, you're right. You're yes. 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 <laughs> Well, confusion, I think, is very obvious. But the, the uh, um, yes, there's all in the event that, that, that there was a temporary vacancy by the mayor, and to clarify the language as to what constitutes that, what responsibilities would be uh, come under the aegis of the council president, should they be required to assume it, but also the threshold. Uh, and part of the discussion is driven by the fact that um, with the ability basically to communicate directives and things like that would be involved in the event of an emergency, the mayor would have to be pretty damn far away, probably in another country, in order to not be able to respond or come back in time. So that we would try to discuss the possibility of readjusting the language as it is to to, to recognize and acknowledge the, that currently things are different, our access is different. So, um, and we did we did vote <coughs> we voted on what did we vote on right and i and i already addressed that yes thank you okay, okay. that's the end of that really <laughs> scattered <laughs> dumb yeah. i did that, that the last council the summer. last council meeting is <laughs> stuff i referred to so well i mean that's the kind of granular issue yes. that the, the charter granular is a generous right. description it's sort, uh, sort of important sort of important <laughs> wow um Proof. And you're doing your part with outreach for all the 12 people who are watching us now <laughs> yeah. on TV, well, they're, including they're, some they're stray, some right. cats and dogs that are just yeah. home alone, I think. Yeah. Um, but thank you. That has, it's always good to have that report about this ongoing uh, committee. And, and when do you meet again? Just a reminder for? Tuesday at 6.30. Yep, this is coming Tuesday. This is coming Tuesday, so right here. If people want to yeah, yeah, but I believe so. No, over uh, in the hearing. You meet room. in the second floor. So, yeah. Great. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, are there any other announcements from any councilors? No? Um, are there any communications from the mayor this evening? No. Okay. Um, so now we have three resolutions. Uh, the first is the first reading of 19.112, resolution in support of uh, right to counsel in eviction cases and eviction ceiling to promote housing opportunity and mobility. As we sometimes do, can I uh, prevail on one of the sponsors to read this into the record? Perhaps uh, Councilor Council Shara? Sure. Okay. Uh, in the City Council, July 11th, 2019, upon the recommendation of Councilor Jean Louis Shara and Councilor William H. Dwight, R19.112, resolution in support of right to counsel in eviction cases and eviction ceiling to promote housing uh, opportunity and mobility. Whereas over 40,000 households in Massachusetts were served with eviction notices in 2018, and whereas community legal aid represents and advises Northampton residents about their eviction cases, but the need is far greater than the funding for community legal aid services, and whereas many tenants are unaware of their rights and legal protections both in and out of the courtroom, and whereas overall over 92% of Commonwealth tenants received no legal guidance once an eviction notice was delivered, nor assistance from an attorney in defending the eviction in court, and whereas access to critical legal resources, guidance, and support from a legal advocate prior to an eviction proceeding <coughs> can protect people from being displaced by an eviction, prevent homelessness, and create a path to housing stability. And whereas the following right to counsel bills have been refiled for the 
2020 legislative session and assigned to the Joint Committee on the Judiciary for hearing on July 16, 2019, S. Uh, 913, by Senator Sal and, and uh, D. Domenico, and H. 3456 by Represent Representative China Tyler, both titled An Act to Ensure Right to Counsel in Eviction Proceedings, and H. 1537, an Act Establishing a Right to Counsel in Certain Eviction Cases, filed by Representatives David M. Rogers and Michael S. Day. And whereas, since 1988, over one million such eviction cases have been filed in Massachusetts, and once filed, become part of that tenant's eviction record, documenting the tenant's history of having, ever having sued or been sued by a landlord. And whereas, regardless of fault, outcome, or underlying basis for a court filing, possessing any record of an eviction filing can affect a tenant's ability to secure housing and may give a landlord reason to reject their application. And whereas in 2013, the Massachusetts trial court began, place, began placing eviction record information online, making a tenant's court record history easily accessible to the public and to tenant screening companies, which routinely recommend rejection of ten, re rejections of tenants for having been in court regardless of the outcome of the case or proof of clerical error. And whereas even children and minors named in eviction proceedings risk permanent records that impact their search for housing when they become adults. And whereas many landlords routinely file a notice to quit simply as a matter of course as the conclusion of a tenancy and are unaware of the collateral consequences of eviction records or of the growing record of evictions they themselves are accumulating. And whereas bills H3566 and S824, quote, promoting housing opportunity and mobility through eviction ceiling homes, uh, sponsored by Representative Michael Morin and Senator Joseph Boncourt, respecti respectively, um, have been assigned to the Joint Committee on the Judiciary for hearing on July 16, 2019. And whereas these bills would protect tenants from being unfairly branded with an eviction record by sealing records until a judgment is rendered and ensuring the accuracy of records while not altering the legal rights of landlords, property owners, or tenants. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Northampton City Council hereby states its support of the right to counsel for tenants in eviction proceedings and the acts establishing and ensuring those rights, S913, H3456, and H1537, be it further resolved that the Northampton City Council also hereby supports S824 and H3566, the acts to promote housing opportunity and mobility through eviction sealing. Be it further resolved, the administrative assistant of the city council shall cause a copy of this resolution to be sent to the state sponsors of the acts to ensure right to counsel and eviction proceedings, Senator Sal N. D. Domenico and Representative China Tyler, the sponsors of an act establishing a right to counsel in certain eviction cases, Representatives David M. Rogers and Michael S. Day, the sponsors of the acts promoting housing opportunity and mobility through eviction sealing, Representative Michael Morin and Senator Joseph Boncourt, chairs of the joint committee of the judiciary, uh, Senators James B. Eldridge and Representative Claire D. Cronin, State Representative Lindsay Sabadoza, State Senator Joe Comerford, House Speaker Robert D. Uh, DeLeo, State Senate President Karen Spilka, and Governor Charles Baker. Move approval. Okay. Is there a second? Second by Councilor Bidwell. Uh, and <coughs> by Councilor Dwight. So, discussion? Uh, I'll start. Um, first, uh, I, have, I have a couple of amendments I want to make first, if that's okay. Of course. Um, as you heard in public comment, this was, um, this hearing is next week, and so we uh, we moved fast to get this on the agenda for for this meeting. So there are a couple things that I would like to have added. Um, as was noted, uh, Senator Joe Comerford and Lindsay Representative Lindsay Sabados are co-sponsors. Um, so I wanted to um, amend the first now. Therefore, be it resolved to say. Uh, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Northampton City Council hereby states its support of the right to counsel for tenants in eviction proceedings, and this is the change, and joins our state senator, our state legislators, Senator Joe Comerford and Representative Lindsay Sabadosa, who are co-sponsors in supporting the acts establishing and ensuring those rights. So, uh, that's second. a motion seconded by Councillor Dwight. Any discussion on that motion? Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion's approved. Uh, you have the floor. I have one. I have another one, very similar. Um, the next, uh, be it further resolved, that the Northampton City Council also hereby supports with co-sponsors Senator Joe Comerford and Representative Lindsay Sabadosa, S824. So just after co-sponsors adding Senator Joe Comerford and Representative Lin Lindsay Sabadosa before the bill numbers. Second. Okay. So a motion made and seconded. Any discussion on that amendment? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Opposed, any abstentions? Amendment's approved. Thank you. Um, and 
just continuing on, so I, I would, they all had to leave, but I wanted to thank the attorneys that were here, Jennifer Derringer and Pamela Schwartz, uh, for their powerful comments, and especially Joel Feldman, who, um, who approached me about the state legislation and brought it to my attention, and so I, I thank him for, for that and for his help on this resolution. Um, as soon as I spoke to Joel about it, I knew I wanted to add my voice to those calling for these changes. Um, I think everyone should have a right to counsel in any legal situation, but certainly when one's home and their basic human right to shelter is at risk, should they have a right to have uh, counsel um, assist them on that. So um, having sat on the Community Development Block Grant Committee with Councilor LaBarge now for five years, um, I've heard about the really remarkable work that community legal aid does um, specifically <coughs> around this issue and, um, and how the need far exceeds the resources, you know, the meager resources that, they, that we are able to provide them with community development block grants um, and the other resources. And so as you heard uh, Jennifer Derringer, Derringer say, um, they turn away at least 50% of the people who are, are seeking their help. Um, and then you heard the other fairly horrifying statistics from um, Pamela and Joel about um, how rare it is for tenants to have any representation. Um, so, but I also, I've been able to hear the success stories with Councilor LaBarge from um, Community Legal Aid, and, and you got to hear a couple of them tonight, um, and what can really happen when people do get this representation. And um, as she said, they often are just little, they're little things that people need help with. They're just sort of little um, situations sometimes that if someone can step in and assist that tenant, it's the difference between them having a home and not having a home. Mm -hmm. um, so when, um, and it's, it's the difference between someone's life sort of maintaining and them being in a situation where it can really snowball and um, ha be painful and dangerous, and as you heard, almost impossible for them to regain housing after that point. Um, and I think it's particularly appalling that children and minors who are named in these eviction proceedings um, of no fault or consequence of their own um, end up carrying these eviction records with them. And, um, and that this seems like a really blatantly obvious way that we can um, help end sort of generational um, cycles of homelessness. It's, it's appalling to me that children can have these records um, and then that impacts their ability to, um, to have homes when they are adults. Um, so I know that having attorneys do this kind of work takes resources, but I really think it should be a, a basic right in our legal system that someone have access to representation when their very home is in jeopardy. And I would love to see Community Legal Aid, who again does amazing work here in our community, um, be able to do this work fully funded and that um, the other attorneys who do this work um, are funded, but that also, if, if there was funding for this, there are many more who would do this work. So I just think this is a, a basic right that we all need to support. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Um, if you don't mind, we'll defer to the co-sponsor and then go to Council Bard. The disparity in justice, I mean, we were very proud of our justice system, but there are, there are some serious points of shame. And, and there is a gross inequity, uh, particularly people of a certain class, of a certain cultural identity that, and clearly more vulnerable. And, and, and you know, we don't have a more glaring example than say Jeffrey Epstein, who has very expensive representation managed to avoid uh, criminal prosecution at the highest level because he had the means to pay for it. And the fact that people of much, much better moral character than Jeffrey Epstein, uh, are in jeopardy of losing their homes, being homeless, and having their lives redefined in a moment when they're most vulnerable uh, by a system that, that literally is stacked against them. And, and what Joel spoke about was that, that trying somehow to offset that with, a, with actually a relatively comparatively meager uh, attempt to try and at least try and tip the scales a little bit back. And I mean, you know, this is not a panacea by any means, but the fact that it's so egregious, um, the absence of representation, the, 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 
in, in a very complicated legal situation that people who have uh, no means or nor the wherewithal to defend themselves against a practice and well-paid attorney who is subsidized by a landlord, there, 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 it, 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 the fact that this situation exists is mortifying. And it's very shameful. And, we, and we're not entitled to brag about our judicial system, if, if, particularly in this circumstance, when there is no guarantee of representation uh, in these courts, in these actions. So this, and, and particularly, you know, the eviction ceiling issue, you are condemned just by someone sending you an eviction notice. It's not even, you, it doesn't even get adjudicated at that point. You are, as, as uh, Councilor Schwartz had said, branded with a scarlet E. And as Councilor Sherrill was referring to, you don't have to be, you don't even have to be the leasee in order to be so tainted. And that's, this is just grotesque. And we, and, and given the numbers that are described here, and given the uh, a growth of homelessness and displaced people, and given the fact that the huge, the disproportionate amount happening to persons of color and persons of a certain class, it is, it's, it is an obscenity that needs some. This is a slight adjustment. This isn't. A, this is not a solution by any stretch. But when Councilor Sherrod mentioned this to me and told me about it, there was that the, it, it. Actually, the. It struck me as so bizarrely out of whack that I thought that even under the worst circumstance, we wouldn't find ourselves. This this situation doesn't exist. There's a misinterpretation. It's true. It's it is. We actually are this bad. So I, I, I think it is incumbent upon us at least to lend our support and, and emphatic endorsement of this and more. And, and it is my hope that at least this in some way allows the co our co-sponsored representatives to uh, leverage this in some way. Although, I, 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 and I do hope that the legislature will be responsive, move it out of committee, and, and actually take a vote on it and vote in the affirmative, as I hope the same thing will happen here tonight. Thank you very much. Councilor LeBarge, did you want to? Yes, um, thank you. Um, I, I just think, just hearing Pamela Schwartz this evening, is, it's a disgraceful situation that's happening here. And to have families actually being monitored and reading what happens here of information of a family, a child, or whatever, who has been evicted. I think you're looking at the rights. I feel that they should have, definitely have legal aid. There should be a representative. I feel that I am hoping that this is gonna pass. No matter what, to not even know that you have representation or you can't get representation is the wrong way to go. And I know for a fact in the city of Northampton that we are very strong, very vocal about whoever you are, that we as counselors will take care of you and do it the right way. And I am gonna support this 100%. And Councilor Shira, I thought I heard tonight that there is a meeting that's going to be held at the State House. I think it's next Tuesday. Would you like a second reading on this tonight so we could get this to move to Boston? Thank you for that offer. Councilor Bidwell. Um, I was going to ask about second reading too. I assume that would be appropriate. Um, it certainly is no surprise uh, that the deck is stacked pretty horribly against tenants in, in housing situations, but the magnitude of it, to have it quantified the way this resolution does, and then to have a personal face put on it the way we heard from attorneys here tonight is very, uh, very powerful. So I really appreciate Councilor Shara and Dwight bringing this forward. What strikes me is the irony that it increasingly, I think, uh, the social services and the housing worlds are agreeing that stability of housing is at the, we have policies called housing first, because 
so much good outcomes in health, in education, in recovery from addiction, in prevention of, of or avoidance of a life of crime, it's all tied to the stability of housing. So on, on the one hand, we know this, and we have public policies moving increasingly in the direction of that. And then on the other hand, we allow this un unbelievable, these incredible roadblocks that get in the way of that stability of housing. Uh, so the, the, the irony is, is really um, dramatic, and it makes it especially compelling <coughs> that uh, this state legislation be supported. So I appreciate the uh, counselors for bringing it forward, and I'll support it. Anyone else to comment on this? So even if you, you're successful in passing this, some of it costs no money, or next to no money. And some of it presumably has to be funded, which is assuming community aid organizations fight for funding now. So that will be the second battle you fight if you're successful. Is that is that correct? I mean, okay. Yeah. Any other discussion? Okay. You want to roll call on this? Or? Okay. No discussion. Uh, roll call. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Donald. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Suspend the rule. Second. Okay. There's a motion to suspend the rules to allow for two readings tonight. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor of suspending rules, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Move second reading, please. Move suspended. Second. And it was made and seconded to have a second reading tonight. Any discussion on second reading? Okay. Uh, then we'll have a roll call, please. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Okay. Approved on second reading. <coughs> Any other resolutions uh, on second reading? Uh, first is 19.095, a resolution to redesignate the City of Northampton Cultural District. A motion on this, please. Second. So moved. Okay. Second. Made and second. Any discussion on this resolution on second reading? Uh, we'll have a roll call on this. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. <coughs> Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Okay, proven second reading. Next is 19.096, a resolution encouraging the Northampton Board of Health and the Massachusetts State Legislature to take action to increase measles Im immunization rates in our, in our communities. Made by Councillor Dwight, seconded by Councillor Barge. Any discussion on second reading? Oh, Councillor Bidwell. Uh, I don't really have anything to add to the mm. compelling comments from uh, Reverend Bethesia. And I would add, though, that since we uh, drafted the resolution, uh, and there were at that point 1,044 cases of measles reported in the country. That was as of June 13th. By July 3rd, that had gone up to 1,109. So the measles reports continue. The, the public health community continues to be concerned about this. So I continue to think it's appropriate that we urge our uh, legislators to act on this. Uh, I think very compelling case that's made for the removal of the religious exemption. Do we have that figure appear in the resolution that requires the, the, the resolution had the figure as of June 13th, okay. 2019. In, in the last three, okay. Do I'm we, not suggesting we You don't want to change it? No, no, Good just enough. as a point of information. Yep. It continues to increase. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Any other discussion on the second reading? Okay. Uh, hearing none, roll call, please. Councilor Klein, yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Donald. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Approved on second reading. Uh, here are the items on the consent agenda. At the request of anybody, we will, any councillor, we will remove them for a separate vote. Otherwise, there's no discussion on these things. First, the minutes of June 6, 2019 and June 20th, 2019. Uh, next appointment. Appointments to the Disability Commission, all of which have received positive recommendations from the Committee on uh, City Services. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, to the Arts Council, Danielle Amadeo, 50 Union Street, number 13, Northampton. Uh, let me check all these terms. They're probably all the same. 
All right, everybody I read off is going to be a term from uh, July 2019 through uh, uh, June. Uh, so July 2019 through June 2022. Okay. The first one seems to be June 2020. Ah, yes. Jeez. So. Uh, for this one, Danielle Amadeo, 50 Union Street, number 13, Northampton, July 2019 through June 2021. Uh, that's the Arts Council. But for all subsequent ones, the term will be July 2019 through June 2022. Thank you very much. Uh, to the Conservation Commission, Jason Perry, 14 Carolyn Street, Florence. To the Disability Commission, Judith Kimberly, 659 Park Hill Road, Florence. Uh, Jean Page. Uh, oh, you know, uh, let me be clear. I've been going through this too fast. So Jason Perry goes to the Conservation Commission, uh, and then to the Disability Commission, that's Judith Kimberly. Am I, yes. Was I clear on that? Okay. Yes. I don't know if I forgot to say Disability Commission. So Perry goes to the Conservation Commission. To the Disability Commission, you have Judith Kimberly. Uh, also, Jean Page, 46 Evergreen Road, 107 Leeds. Uh, Chris Palamas of 659 Park Hill Road in Florence also goes to the Disability Commission. Uh, to the Human Rights Commission, Jeremy Whalen of 31 Union Street in Northampton, and to the Public Shade Tree Commission, Marilyn Castriota, 79 West Street, Northampton. Uh, these there are more appointments. These have also received positive recommendations in the Committee on City Services. Uh, to the Disability Commission is Rodney Cuneth of 8 Reed Street, Northampton. Uh, that's uh, all three of these are going to be July 2019 to June 2022. Uh, to the Energy and Sustainability Commission, Gordon Meadows, 239 Bridge Street, Northampton. To the Planning Board, Marissa Elkins, 50 Washington Avenue, Northampton. Um, okay. And we second. Think, and well, well, and um, more. We got more, yeah. an application for amended fuel storage license, DPW headquarters, 125 Locust Street. Uh, we had this in hearing. An affirmative vote in the consent agenda is equivalent to approving an amended fuel storage license for DPW headquarters at that address. Uh, in addition, there is 19.107, a petition for an annual secondhand dealer license, Vintage Treasures. Uh, this is the annual secondhand dealer license renewal. Uh, uh, that business is located at 41 Strong Street. The petitioner is Cynthia K. Wheeler. Uh, there are a number of appointments. A vote on, on these will be equivalent to referring them to the Committee on City Services. To the Board of Assessors. Um, and all the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read four in all the terms of July 2019 through uh, to June 2022. 20, uh, July 2019 through 2022. Okay. Uh, board of Assessors, Margot E. Welsh, uh, 349 Coles Meadow Road, to the Disability Commission. Uh, Mikael Morton of 95 Washington Avenue, Northampton. Human Rights Commission, Miller, 33 Summer Street, Northampton. To the Board of Registrars, Joseph Tarantino, 110 North Elm Street, Northampton. All those four are for referral. Move to approve. That takes care of it. So I got a motion from Council second. Barge and a second by Council Dwight. And there are no removals? Should have asked before. Okay. The motion on the floor. All those in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Those any abstentions? Now we are recessed for finance. Excellent. Uh, Laura, I'm calling this to order. Would you do the roll, please? Councillor Murphy. Here. Councillor Carney. Present. Councillor DeMar. Yes. Here. Excellent. So first item is the minutes of June 20th. Do we have a motion? Move approved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so our first order is 19... Point 103. It's an order to transfer funds from the FY 2019 unused earned leave to compensate absences reserve fund. Order that the amount of $124,666.92 be transferred from the FY19 unused earned leave account to the compensated absences reserve fund for the future payment of accrued liabilities for compensated absences due to any employee or full-time officer of the city upon the termination of the employee's full-time or full-time officer's employment. Do we have a motion in finance? Make a motion. Second? Okay. Any questions for the mayor? This is something we've been doing now annually, annually since FY 2014 when uh, the state allowed creation of this uh, balance of this reserve fund. And so basically before we close out the books for FY uh, 2019, we're basically transferring into this, uh, into this fund that's specifically for uh, unused earned leave. So you've done it the past four years since we set up the account. 
um, and it basically allows us to deal with um, fluctuations in when um, people retire and are entitled to various degrees of payouts depending on the contract and depending on their years of service. Mm -hmm. so Any questions? Hearing none, then all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Uh, the next is upon the recommendation of the mayor, 19104, in order to appropriate FY 2020 cash capital funds for various capital projects. Order that the following capital projects are appropriated from the, the general fund FY 2020 capital account. Central Services Municipal Building, elevator shaft roof repair, $40,000. Central Services Municipal Building, replace boiler, $45,000. Central Services Municipal Building, upgrade security upgrades to the collector and parking office, $20,000. Central Services replace the HVAC technician's van, $45,000. Central Services Senior Center Space Utilization Study, $10,000. Central Services Fire Station replace cooling condensers, $25,000. Information Technology Services Municipal Broadband Study, $30,000. Fire Rescue, a vehicle lift for their for their repair shop, $48,000. Fire Rescue, a staff vehicle replacement rotation, $42,000. Parks and Recreation, playing field maintenance, $15,000. DPW Traffic Calming, $10,000. And DPW Wood Waste Disposal, $10,000 for a total of $340,000. Do we have a motion of finance? A motion. Second. And so this is, as you know, as part of the capital improvement program every year, um, one, of the, uh, one of the funding sources, it's called cash capital. So these were actually, um, this cash capital budget was adopted as part of the FY 2020 budget. Um, and so now this is the first meeting in FY 2020. So we're basically asking you to please now um, appropriate those funds to these capital projects that were outlined in the um, capital improvement program. We are asking for two readings um, because we want to get the, some of these, these are construction projects, and we want to get them going as soon as we can. And again, this is not your first time seeing them because they were part of the Kaplan program and part of that document that you uh, you held a hearing on and, and, uh, and uh, approved. So that's what the purpose is. And uh, each one of these projects are contained in the capital improvement program with uh, descriptions, et cetera. And Council DeBarge has a question. Sure. Um, Mayor, maybe you can explain I think the Senior Center Space Utilization Study, could you just sure. explain a little bit about that? Sure. So um, as you know, the Senior Center was uh, has now been open for uh, 10 years. Yeah. And um, and and we've had the, sort of the, the needs of programmatic needs and some of the space needs are sort of ever changing. And we've already done some kind of some changes within the senior center in terms of moving some uses around things that um, we, some of the rooms because we have such an increased need for programming um, and um, so one of the things we've done this sort of on an ad hoc basis but one of the things we want to do and what uh, Ms. Westberg wants to do is to actually have an architect come in and just really look at the space and see is are there ways they could utilize it more efficiently to account for all this new programming particularly looking at um, you know, some, of the, some of the larger wide open spaces and is there a way to create more usable public space. Um, and um, so you know, one great example is you know, when we first built the center, we had a computer room that had you know, a room full of desktop computers and that's like all it could ever be used for. Now most people don't use desktop computers so we're sort of converting that room and we're having a a cart full of laptops that people can use and they can be they can teach computer classes anywhere in the senior center it doesn't have to be this room that can never be used for anything else because it's full of desktops so those kinds of things are happening and as um, new uh, people are retiring the boomers there's um, they may uh, they're uh, not maybe so much interested in making dresses for dolls and they're interested in other kinds of activities. So we're trying to really make sure that that building, that we're using the space to the fullest possible. So this is just gonna um, have someone come in and just really take a look at it and give us some sense of if there are changes that we need to make going forward. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for the mayor on this one? Uh, hearing none, then all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 
All right, the next one is a long one. It's 19108, and it's in order to authorize the FY 2020 intermunicipal agreements. Order, order that whereas uh, Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 4A allows for joint operations of public activities among governmental units, and whereas Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 4A requires that such intergovernmental agreements be approved in a city by the City Council and the Mayor, and whereas the City of Northampton provides services to and shares services with other municipalities, Therefore, pursuant to Mass General, Mass, Mass General Law Chapter 40, uh, Section 4A, the City Council hereby authorizes the City of Northampton to enter into the following intermunicipal agreements for FY 2020. All these agreements are for one year unless otherwise noted. A contract with the Town of Williamsburg for building inspection and zoning enforcement services. The agreement to provide the Town of Williamsburg with the service for a lump sum fee. A contract with the Town of Williamsburg for electrical inspection services. The agreement is to provide the Town of Williamsburg with services uh, with permits fees turned over to the City of Northampton. Contract with the town, Towns of Amherst, Hadley, and East Hampton for Municipal Hearing Officer Services. Agreement to provide Municipal Hearing Officer Services pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 148A, Section 2. Dear complaints related to alleged violations of the State Building Codes or State Fire Codes for a lump sum per uh, the agreement. Contracts with the town of Amherst, Chester, Chesterfield, Cummington, Hadley, Middlefield, Pelham, Williamsburg, Goshen, and Worthington to provide veteran services officer services. Uh, agreement to provide these services to the various communities and assessments to the individual towns per agreement. Contract with the towns of Granby, Hadley, Amherst, South Hadley, and East Hampton to provide sealer of weights and measures services. The agreement to provide these services to the various communities and assessments to the individual towns per the agreement. Contract with the Franklin County Regional Council of Governments to monitor, monitor and support the greater Franklin County economic target area. Contract with the Town of Amherst for kennel services. Town of Amherst to provide kennel space for dogs in the custody of the Northampton Animal Control Officer per that agreement. Contract with the Franklin Regional Council of Governments to partner with the City of Northampton through its health department relative to the following contracts. One, to provide services related or relative to the Hampshire uh, Medical Reserve Corps and two, to provide <coughs> emergency management services for the Hampshire Public Health Emergency Preparedness Coalition. A contract with Amherst, South Hadley, Pelham, Ware, Belchertown, and East Hampton. Uh, the agreement to jointly create a coalition called the Hampshire Opiate Abuse Prevention Collaborative. Uh, charged with the mobilization of local boards of health, medical providers, and educational facilities, social service agencies, community organizers, and other others in Hampshire County to create sustainable policies, programs, and practices to change community ideas and expectations regarding opiate use and abuse, as well as to reduce the, morbid the morbidity and mortality rates that result from opiate use and abuse. A Pioneer Valley Opiate Data Collaborative a contract with Bay State Health Inc. and City of Springfield Department of Health and Human Services, Hamden DA, Northwestern DA, Hamden Sheriff's Department, Opiate Task Force, Berkshire Opiate Abuse Prevention Collaborative, North Coauburn Community Coalition, Partners for a Healthier Community, Inc., uh, an agreement to work cooperatively to create methods to collect, store, and aggregate data regarding opiate use and the abuse in the region with the goal of analyzing trends and identifying short and long-term interve intervention strategies. Contract with the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District, working under the oversight of the Massachusetts Department of Agriculture, focused on mosquito surveillance and control. The city, through its health department, participates in this regional effort to assist Western Massachusetts communities with mosquito-related health concerns. Contract with the towns of Williamsburg, Goshen, Southampton, Chesterfield, Huntington, Hadley, and West Hampton. This agreement provides for laser fish hosting and for uh, an, and for an annual fee for FY 2020 through 2022. Contract with the towns of Amherst and Pelham to seek and accept grants where possible and to otherwise explore the mutual advantages of electricity community aggregation. Contract with the Pioneer Valley Bike Share and to enter into agreements with the cities of West Springfield, Chicopee, and the town of Hadley to participate in Pioneer Valley Bike Share program along with the following entities which are already part of the existing intermunicipal agreement for the program, and that would be Holyoke, Springfield, Amherst, South Hadley, UMass, um, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, and East Hampton. 
already approved through 20, FY 2021. Contract to participate in the Connecticut River Task Force with the police departments of East Hampton, Hadley, South Hadley, Chicopee, and the Northwestern District Attorney in partnership with the Massachusetts Environmental Police to enhance law enforcement efforts on the Connecticut River due to the heavy volume of boating activity within the regional boundaries of adjacent agencies. It's a three-year agreement uh, that runs until May of 2022. Agreement for fiber optic cable with the Five College Net LLC. Agreement to allow the city to use four strands of the cable network, including the right to transport and distribute digital signals for data. Renewal of this agreement for five years from uh, 2019 to 2024, and allowing for automatic renewals for another five years from 2024 to 2028. Public health substance use, health information exchange, and DART case management database. The agreement to share data on opiate use among these entities. Ham Hampshire County Police Departments, Amherst, Belchertown, Chesterfield, East Hampton, Goshen, Granby, Hadley, Hatfield, Huntington, Middlefield, Plainfield, South Hadley, Southampton, Ware, Williamsburg, Amherst College, and uh, Hampshire County EMS uh, and Fire Department Providers, Behavioral Health Network, um, CSO, Northampton Recovery Center, Cooley Dickinson Hospital, Bay State Health Systems, the Northwestern uh, District Attorney, Massachusetts Ambulance, Trip Data, um, Marthas, uh, Department of uh, we, Department of Public Health, MAD Registry of Vital uh, Records, Death Certificate Data, Mass Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, uh, Crime Research Unit, National Incident-Based Reporting System, um, PNP, Mass PAT, MAVEN, and other Mass CHIP data, and other relevant behavioral health services um, and substance use-related data. An agreement to participate in the Domestic Violence Intervention Project, a regional partnership formed between the Northwestern DA's Office, Safe Passage, New England Learning Center for Women in Transition and Area Police Departments. It's a four-year agreement to um, December 2020. Agreement to participate in the Northwestern District Anti-Crime Task Force with all communities and the respective law enforcement entities uh, within the jurisdiction of the Northwestern District, which are within the jurisdiction of the Northwestern District Courts and that of the Northwestern District Attorney's Office. Multi-year agreement with no end date. A contract with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and multiple towns for the Mass in Motion program um, renew for three more years through 2022. The following are agreements currently authorized by the city that have not expired. Contract with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission for EPA stormwater MS4 permit assistance that runs through March 2022. Paramedic intercept agreements with multiple towns and ambul ambulance districts through November of 2041. Contract with Pioneer Valley Transit Authority for Senior Transportation Services through November 2041. Contract with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission for Local Planning Technical Assistance through the Local District Technical Assistance and the Local Technical Assistance Programs. That runs through F the end of FY 2020. Contract with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission for Traffic and Transportation Analysis through the Federal Department of Transportation Unified Work Program. That runs through 2020. Contract with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission for Historic Preservation Planning through the Community Preservation Preservation Act program that's going to run through 2020 and a contract with Greenfield Community Colleges to use one strand of our five college fiber network for an annual fee per the agreement that would run through 2022. So do we have a motion of finance? Motion. Second. Second. That's a mouthful. No, uh, yeah. Uh, wow. So um, so this is something there are no new agreements here. Um, there, in a few cases we're adding communities to some agreements as was noted in the like share. Mm -hmm. um, Sealer of Weights and Measures, we've just recently added Hadley and East Hampton. Um, and I believe, uh, trying to think of any other expansions. But I mean, um, I, I just always think this is impressive to see all in one document because it kind of shows the collaborations that are happening in the Valley. And in many cases, Northampton's, you know, leading the collaborations. Um, I note the uh, one of the ones uh, related to the database um, around opioid use. Uh, that's one that the city got a grant uh, through the state to help create. Um, and actually, uh, Hampshire Hope and um, our health department actually presented that database at a, at a conference in Atlanta. And um, 
got a call from NIH after the conference that they wanted to take a closer look at our database because they think it's a really good model potentially for the nation. Um, for a national database. So there's some really great work going on collaboratively between agencies, and I think it's, uh, particularly in Western Mass, I think it's something that we are, um, we're good at and proud of because we just don't have the economy of scale so we can, you know, combine. Like the laser fish project's another great one where um, we're hosting laser fish for all these small towns that need to do document storage. Um, they don't have that capacity, but the state gave us a grant, and so we're uh, providing the, uh, the storage, and they're, you know, they're now able to put their documents online and store them. So anyway, anyway, so it's always a good annual look at the things that we're involved in. Any questions for the mayor on any of those? Councilor Dwight. It's, uh, the uh, strand for the, uh, out of our five college fiber network for Greenfield Community College, is that for the nursing program? Yes, it is. Okay. It's for the nursing program at, at, um, at, uh, at Smith Vocational. Okay. So we have an agreement to let them use some of it. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Then hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 And we have uh, one more, 19109, in order to authorize gift fund expenditure by the Human Rights Commission, in order that uh, Northampton City Council, in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A, authorizes the expenditure of up to $1,000 from the General Gift Fund to be used by the Human Rights Commission for expenses related to their mission. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. Second? Second. This is actually um, uh, came to me as a request from the uh, chair of the uh, Human Rights Commission. Um, they don't have a formal budget in, you know, uh, in, in our city budget, um, but they've been really trying to step up some of their outreach and education and brochures, and they've done some forums around the city. And so they were asked, they requested if they could be allotted a, a small budget for the year to be able to do this um, sort of thing. So I'm asking to basically authorize them to access up to $1,000 um, in FY20 um, to be used for those purposes. Um, and again, it would just be for the use of the Human Rights Commission to carry out their uh, to carry out their mission over the next year. Mm -hmm. Councilor Budge, you you're, I know you're involved with them. Do you have any questions? Or? No, because I mean, if people want to go ahead and donate money to the Human Rights Commission, that would go right into this. We thing. certainly can also accept gifts, and that's something they can do as well. Um, but as you know, the council has to authorize the spend expenditure of gifts, and so um, as you know, for several of our committees, we you know, at the beginning of the year, we'll often authorize up to a certain amount, like the reuse committee or other committees that have a budget like this. I think th the youth commission have a gift fund as well. They, they, they have a fair amount of money that's been saved. Exactly, yeah. So some of these smaller committees that aren't staffed and, and want to carry out programming, this is a good way for them to have access to it, so. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilor. Uh, do you want two readings? Um, it, it, it's not crucial, but obviously this is money we already have. We're just basically saying you have access to it. Right. I mean, I think we've requested two readings only yeah. because there's like six or seven weeks bet before the next meeting, so. Yeah, I, I was just wondering what the urgency was. Yeah. It's just the summer schedule. And yeah, I think it was more just recognizing that there's a long period between now and then and if they yeah. wanted to try to plan programming for the fall. Okay, but I'm hearing it's not like an emergency. Or um, no one has told me it's an emergency. Okay, well, if you ask, they'll say it is, so. Okay, yeah. thanks. Any other questions? Um, that all in favor of rights are under attack around the world, Mr. Hmm. President. And that is true, but it probably costs more than $1,000 to take care of, so. <laughs> Every small <laughs> investment helps, so. No doubt, no doubt. So, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. And uh, that being the end of the agenda, a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. Thank you. Okay, so we are back in uh, City Council. We we're going to go to these financial orders. First is 19103, in order to transfer funds from FY 2019 unused earned leave to compensate. The Compensated Absences Reserve Fund. Motion on this. Second. Uh, made by Councilor Barr, second by Councilor Dwight. Any discussion on this financial order? Uh, hearing none, uh, roll call, please. Councilor LaBarge. <coughs> yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Goodwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. And Councilor Klein. Yes. Okay, first suspend first the reading and uh, motion to suspend rules for allow for second reading made by Councilor Barge and second by uh, some.
This you of it, you? Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's the guy in the corner. Some guy who shows up to every meeting. We don't know who he is. Let's call him Bill Dwight. Seconded. Um, all the, any discussion, suspension of rules? All those in favor of spending rules say aye. 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 Same abstentions. Motion on second reading, please. Second reading. Okay, and seconded by Councilor LaBarge. Any discussion on second reading? Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sherrill. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. And Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Okay, approved on second reading. Next is 19.104 in order to appropriate fiscal year 2020 cash capital funds for various capital projects. Okay. Second. Okay. Made and seconded. Any discussion on this financial order? Hearing none, I would like a roll call, please. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. White. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor LaBarge. Yes. And Councillor Murphy. Yes. Suspend the rule. Okay. Second. Uh, motion to spend the rules. Uh, any discussion on suspension of rules? We'll have for second reading. Uh, all those in favor of suspending the rules, please say aye. 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 Any abstentions? Rules are suspended. Now, is there a motion on second reading? So moved. Second. Okay. okay. Main second. Any discussion on second reading? Roll call, please. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. And Councilor Nash. Yes. Okay, that's approved. Next is 19.108 in order to authorize fiscal year 2020 intermunicipal agreements. Second. Okay. Made and seconded. Any discussion on this order? Uh, hearing none, let's have a roll call. Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. <coughs> yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Lamar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Suspend yes. the rule. And Councilor Donald. Yes. <laughs> uh, anyone else like to spend the rule? <laughs> I'll second that. That's <laughs> now you're actually going to be the first because it was first made out of order. <laughs> so you're, you're on the end. I move to rule. suspend rules to allow for a second reading. And who seconds that? <laughs> Councilor Labarge, you second the suspension of rules. Okay. Okay, duly noted. Uh, any discussion on suspension of rules? That's uh, because she was low. <laughs> all those in favor of suspending rules, please say aye. Uh, uh, aye. Any opposed, any abstentions? Thank you very much. I actually do appreciate our council barge keeps on top of that. Thank you. Uh, and so now we can have a second reading. Motion. Oh, yes, so moved. Second. second. Okay. Good. Any discussion on second reading? Uh, then roll call, please. Council Bidwell? Yes. Carney. Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Yes. 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 Yes.
move approval, please. Okay. Second. And, and seconded by Councillor Carney. Any discussion on second reading? Do we have discussion up here on second reading? Or <laughs> just discussing what you're going to do later? Okay. Uh, so hearing no discussion on the second reading, the surplus, a building in the city. Uh, sounds like we're ready to have a roll call. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor LaBarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Okay. That's approved in second reading. Uh, there are three ordinances which have to be referred. I assume we can take them as a group. Councillor, would you like yeah. to? Okay. That would be my uh, okay. request, uh, yes. So those would be 19.102, an ordinance relative to parking on Glendale Road. 19.105, an ordinance to rezone five parcels from general industrial to office industrial. And 19.110, an ordinance relative to bus stops on Bridge Street. All those council. I would second move them as a group. Okay, yeah. great. So, two legislative matters. The committee of any other committees that want them? I, I presume these came from uh, TPC. Uh, Did it? Yeah, so uh, well, A and for the C five came, parcels, right. came out of TPC, and I'm wondering where B came from. Uh, that came from zoning, I would suspect. That, yeah, that gets where did eight come from? Okay, TPC. Yeah, so, so yeah, I think legislative out. matters is appropriate referral for all three of these, and I don't see any reason for okay. other committees to sign on. Okay. Okay. And so, we do we go to the planning board too, anyway? Just yeah, on. yeah. automatic. We don't need to send yeah, it. Yeah, we don't need to do that, right? Just no. goes there, and they can do what they want. Okay, <laughs> uh, so good, and that's it. So, it goes to one committee, and we have the motion on the floor. Any discussion on the referral of all? All those in favor of the referral, please say aye. aye. Any opposed, any abstentions? So those are referred. Thank you. Uh, we have one ordinance on uh, first reading. That is 19.025, an ordinance to rezone five parcels uh, from URC to CB and to include parcels in CBAD. <coughs> I would move approval. Okay. Second. Second. All right. Um, we can get it on the screen. Um, and there is a map attached to it as well. It has a standard enacting language that comes upon the recommendation of the mayor. Ordinance be ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton and City Council assembled as follows. A. Um, <coughs> oh, okay. Modify the city zoning map to rezone five parcels from general industrial to office industrial. One. That's actually the, the no, it's, oh, that's the one we referred. 19025. Yeah. Thank you. This is 19025. Thank you. So it should be the last one in the stack. Uh, no. I read it off this device, which <laughs> creates <laughs> pictures and words for me to read. Um, but still upon the recommendation of the mayor. Uh, um, so this is just the, to be clear. Nineteen point. Oh, there it is. There's a hard copy. Nineteen point zero two five. An ordinance to rezone five parcels from URC to CB and to include parcels in CBAD. Okay. Uh, an ordinance of the City Council of Northampton providing that uh, the zoning chapter, Chapter three hundred fifty, Section three point four, Code of Ordinances, City of Northampton, uh, etc. Standard language be amended by. Uh, modifying the zoning map of said code to rezone five parcels from URC to CB to CB and to modify chapter 156 slash 2 map expansion or dash 2 to include these parcels with the central business architecture district so it would be ordained by the city council uh, as follows and pretty much repeating myself but the exact wording is modify the city zoning map to rezone five parcels from A residential C to central business. And so this includes five uh, parcels. Uh, first is, just for the record, 32A-105, which is 34 Market Street. Uh, number two, 32A-181, 57 Bridge Street. Uh, 32A-182, 69 Bridge Street. 32A-176 and 32A uh, 260 um, 
And I think it sounds like that's 58 and 66 Bridge Street, respectively. Well, that's what's written. Uh, modify the map in 156-2 to include parcels above within Central Business Architecture District. All right. So this is one of those that it's an ordinance change, but it's a it's a picture ordinance change right. because we keep this information in a map as opposed to writing out the meets and bounds or coordinates or whatever in, in words on a, on, a, on a page. So, um, so there we go. Um, I'd be curious to know the genesis of it and the thinking of Committee on Legislative Matters or the mayor or whoever wishes to speak to it. Everyone as well. I just speak generally to it and then I know that um, Legislative Matters met with um, Ms. Mish about it. I mean, this is, we've, over the time, we've been slowly looking at some of these um, parcels on this part of um, downtown. And so it's an attempt to align. Uh, we've done, we've made some incremental changes to central business. And so this is adding five more parcels to bring uh, these other parcels into central business. And it, it does go down Market Street a little bit. I think like Joe's Pizza. That's the parking yeah. lot. Yeah, parking lot, exactly. <clears throat> um, so uh, that's, uh, and you've got a map that shows you the exact parcels. So I would defer to folks on legislative matters who are part of the hearing. Any, um, uh, I know property owners knew about this. The people Con Councilor Nash had, um, uh, had I, I think you contacted virtually. I all tried to bodies. contact as many people. It, right. I multiple attempts to contact all of the property owners and reaching out to, to the abutters. Um, I wasn't able to reach uh, the owner of 69 Bridge Street. Um, I don't think the planning department was able to do that either but I spoke to all of the other property owners and they are supportive of this so mm -hmm. it's a natural continuation and makes sense given the circumstance changing circumstances uh, 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 planner Nish came and did present and actually it, 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 ba it basically is an adjustment that recognizes conditions on the ground as they have changed, and it makes and it and, it, and there were no objections that were offered actually in the in the, um, in the differences that, that they would allow or impose are relatively negligible, but it just makes this makes more sense structurally. Council Chair, are you with? Um, Thank you. Yeah, I just want to note it also came to community resources, right. and we actually had I'd say a handful of abutters or, or neighbors, um, people who lived in the neighborhood who did come and ask questions of Carolyn Mish and I think had their questions answered and felt like they understood <coughs> better what the situation was. And I know Councillor Klein asked a few questions and I think we had a pretty full conversation about it and gave it a positive recommendation. Councillor Bebo. I would just add that at, at that community resources meeting, one of the things that we talked a little bit about was that this includes properties of historic Northampton right. and it provides them with somewhat greater flexibility in their in their operations and since they are a very much expanding dynamic organization I think it's great that it provides a little bit of extra leeway to them in their, with what they can and can't do on premises Any other discussion I guess one major difference central business no parking requirements off street parking requirements I'm seeing, I think I see parcels that have large parking lots being taken into it. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if that came up for discussion, but certainly if they were redeveloped, then um, there wouldn't be the same kind of parking requirements, which we've sort of been taking a more progressive or environmentally conscious um, approach to, to writing, I guess, anyway. So. Anyway, now I'm just saying what occurs to me. <laughs> Anything else? Oh, Councilor Nash. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going to be voting um, uh, to approve these. Um, I, you know, I did a lot of work reaching out to people here. Um, as Councilor Shera pointed out, a lot of it just was answering questions because it, is, it's a, it was a big shift to go from <coughs> a, a residential zoning to central business. That, that the, the number of uses, the way the the, the um, development can occur um, that um, it, 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 was, it, it there was a lot of complex questions and I, I think people who wanted to know those answers had the opportunity to, to show up and, um, and they got the information they needed 
The, the only thing I would suggest changing in this process is that um, the uh, property owners were informed of the map changes, but the direct abutters were not. Um, so anybody who, uh -huh. whose property abutted, you know, uh, the, the, uh, uh, there's the condos, there's uh, people on uh, graves, that um, they, they weren't informed and that the, the policy of the planning department is to not inform abutters of map changes. And for me, it just seems I mm. want, it, that that is really the time we should be telling people because we have a, we've worked with our zoning to have a streamlined process so that once your zoning is in place, you, you really kind of know what it's going to be and, and, you're, and, and, and things are going to go through much more smoothly. There's not a lot of discussion about what can be done on any particular parcel. In this case, where we're talking about the map changes, this is the opportunity to have that discussion about, you know, what should go on in a particular neighborhood. And um, so, I, my, you know, I, I look forward to working with the mayor on maybe coming up with a solution to this. But, uh, but I think letting abutters know in this sort of situation would be really good. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, Graves Avenue, historic Northampton, if you're not familiar, like familiar with the area, you wouldn't know like there's a real history, history there between those two streets, um, just because like they're in back of each other, yeah. and they're connected. Um, so I think it does make sense that abutters are notified of important public matters that might affect mm -hmm. them in general. All right, so Councillor Dwight. Uh, you did hear from folks on Graves Avenue, though, uh, due to your outreach, as I recall. You yes, yeah, yeah. 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 But yes, a formal pro I don't disagree. I think a, a formal protocol of, of notifying abutters on map changes would be appropriate. I think it's a good time to, to uh, so that there's informed consent mm -hmm. in, in the future. And any, any development projects, at least be aware that that is now an allowed use, basically, rather than coming up surprised suddenly finding it at the 11th the thinking that they bought their property and thinking they're protected from any type of development modification that suddenly is now allowed you so i agree okay any other discussion this cartographic question all right and we're ready for a roll call i guess Councilor Labar. yes Councilor Murphy. yes Councilor yes Yes. 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 Any new? Uh, so that's approved in first reading. Any new business this evening? Uh, move to adjourn. Please. Second. Okay, made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor of adjourn, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Good night. Good night.